Hi friends, welcome to this time of worship at Pathfinder Church. We're glad that you joined us today. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, uh, you might have noticed that we're a little bit delayed. We had some technical issues that we're able to work out with our awesome team here. So thanks for your patience. We are going to worship the Lord together. And as we prepare our hearts to meet with the Lord, I'd like to invite you to join with me in a reading. And please read the words on the screen as indicated. We come from a world of darkness into Christ's world of light. We come from a world of weariness into God's strength and hope. We come from a slumbering world. Strengthened by the Spirit, we come to awaken our souls and watch for the coming of Christ. We're in this Advent season. It's the third Sunday of Advent, and Advent is all about two things. It's about remembering and celebrating the birth of our Savior to this world, and it's also about waiting in anticipation for the return of Jesus and for the time when he will make all things new. We're going to begin by worshiping and singing some songs. The words are going to be on the bottom of your screen. Please join along with us. And if you are joining us on Facebook Live, we encourage you to leave a comment just so that we can know that you're here. You can do that anytime throughout the worship service today. Let's worship the Lord together. Oh! 
Good morning. Good morning. We're here for your announcements. We got lots to go over. It is Christmas time, so we are a busy church. So let's get started. What do you say? Sounds good to me. Awesome. So, hey, Jake, do you know what a gingerbread man puts on his bed? You know, I don't know. Why don't you tell me? A cookie sheet. <laughs> we are getting so excited for our Joel Holy Night Epic Family mm -hmm. event coming, um, coming up. This uh, coming weekend, the 19th or 20th, mm -hmm. uh, it is going to be epic. I we really are going so, to, yeah. yeah, we're going to bake cookies mm -hmm. and learn about the birth of Jesus all at the same time. Well, kind of. <laughs> and we're so excited to share this with you. If you want to be part of it, you must pre-register. We have information and links that we need to send to you. So if this is something that you're interested in, maybe you already uh, bake cookies with your grandchildren. This is just another added element. Why not teach them about Jesus at the same time and why we celebrate Christmas? Um, so Jake, can you tell them how to get registered and any other details they might need to know? Yeah, definitely. It is something that is 100% totally free, but you just have to let us know that you're interested so that we can give you all the things that you need for this event so we can have a wonderful time together. Um, if you're interested, go ahead and register at pathfinderchurch.com. It's under the events tab. Or if you just scroll down on the home page, it should be a picture of a link that you can just click right there. And that'll take you right to the registration sheet. Yep. And for sure, if the 19th or 20th don't work for you, you can still be part of this. You just uh, need to, to pop your name on the pre-registration so we can get you all the information you need to do this as a family. Should be a great way, again, to celebrate Advent and learn about the birth of Jesus all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. All right. What else is on our list today? All right. Just so um, you guys can stay involved and be a part of everything that we're doing, even though we're meeting only online right now, you can still be a part of our Sunday morning activities. 
And one of the ways that you can do that is through virtual choir. Every single week, Steve is putting together videos of, of people singing songs and coming together like that. So if you want to be a part of that, go ahead and send Steve an email, and he'll send you everything that you need to be a part of the virtual choir for the coming week. We also want to involve you another way. Uh, we are doing a combination reading of the, of the birth of Jesus story. So if you're interested in being part of that, it's simply that you're going to record yourself reading a few verses of that part of the scripture, and then we're, uh, we're going to be putting those together into a special format. If you're interested in being part of that, as long as you can read, and we can figure out the technology part, so uh, if you can read, then we want you to be part of this. Reach out to Pastor Jake, and he will get you hooked up with the information that you need to do that. Definitely. And if you're um, already signed up to do that, make sure you get your videos into Steve by the 20th, so this coming Sunday, so that he can put that video together for us. Um, the other thing that we're doing, um, instead of, because we can't gather together for Christmas Eve service, we're actually going to be doing a Zoom hangout open house thing. So um, the service is going to be available throughout the entire day on Christmas Eve so that you can watch it whenever you want, um, as long as it fits into your schedule. But we're also going to be having a special time where we can come together through Zoom at 6.30, we're going to hang out for a half hour. We can share cookies and, and coffee and things virtually and, and just hang out and catch up with each other and then watch the service together at 7 p.m. through Zoom. Should be a great way to reconnect with our church family and uh, celebrate this special time in our uh, faith walk together just in our own homes. So mm -hmm. hopefully uh, you can be part of that. Watch for more details in your email. It will also be on the church website so you can check out more information there. And I think that is all of our announcements for today. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ our joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O oh God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. O oh come, O oh come, Emmanuel. Pray with us. O oh come, thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thy justice here, disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Amen. Amen. might be weird, but one of my favorite things to do is go to church camp. I know that's a strange thing to talk about it at, in, at Christmas time, but it, part of the reason that I love it so much is the singing. We get to do a lot of singing when we go to church camp. And there's a song that I really love, and it ties really well into the story we're going to hear about from Brother Don today. We're going to hear about the part of the, of the Christmas story when 
Mary finds out she's going to have a baby, and then she goes and talks to her, her family member, her cousin, Elizabeth, and how excited both Mary and Elizabeth are that they're both having babies, and they are so filled with joy. And isn't joy something that we all want to have more of? And there's a song that we sing at church camp. At least we used to. I don't know if it still happens. So maybe your moms and dads might have to help you with this one. But there's a song that goes, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Exactly. So I want you to think about that and how excited it is that Mary was that she was going to have a baby, how excited Elizabeth was that she also was going to have, have a baby, and how joyful we can be at this Christmas time getting ready for baby Jesus to be born. And just think about that. And maybe look up the words to that song if you don't know it already and sing it as a family today at lunchtime. Have a great week. All right, as we transition into our time of offering this morning, um, I just want to extend a, a really heartfelt thank you to all of you people that continue to put your faith in us to lead you um, and to bring you services like this and to, to lead you in Bible studies and all the wonderful things that we're doing. Thank you for putting your faith in us. Um, just a reminder of ways that you can give. You can always send a check into the church and, and drop it off during normal business hours, or you can go online to pathfinderchurch.com Hit the, the giving tab and then give that way too. Let us go to the Lord together in prayer this morning. Jesus, you are amazing and you are wonderful. And Jesus, we give you our full selves this morning. We don't hold anything back from you. And we give ourselves willingly, joyfully to you. We don't, we don't want to hold anything back from you this morning. Jesus, we want to give everything that we have to you. So help us to do that. Help us to let go of all of our walls that we have built up, everything that, that's been weighing on us throughout this week, and help our hearts to be open to you today. Please meet us exactly where we're at, like you promised to. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your joy and your peace and your comfort Come right beside us in everything that's going on in our world and in our lives. And just meet us right here in this moment and help us to surrender ourselves to you because you're worthy of our worship, you're worthy of our time, and you're worthy of our love and adoration. Jesus, we give ourselves over to you today because we love you. Amen. We have um, a person in our church, Carol Pello, who is going to be turning 100 years old this coming Wednesday. And we're going to honor her right now by singing Happy Birthday. And you can all do that from your homes. Words are not going to be on your screen, but I think you know this song. Let's sing Happy Birthday to Carol. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Our memory verse for this sermon series comes from the book of John. John 3, 16. It's a verse we all know. This is from the New Living Translation. Let's say these words together. This is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. Let's sing it together. This is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but will have eternal life. This is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but will have
glasses, a mask, and the microphone. No, it's on. No, it's not. It's on. Try now. Try now. Yes, no? Try now. No? You want me to use the mic? Apparently, the technical difficulties continue. <laughs> this morning, we are continuing in our Advent mission sermon series. This morning, we are talking about Christ our joy, and it's uh, subtitled Good News. Good News. So, I want to share with you the text this morning. It is out of Luke 1, uh, verses 39 through 47. And again, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. Mary responded, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. A joyous moment to be sure, just like Christina talked about just a few minutes ago in our children's time. And I want to share with you our theme for this morning. Advent is good news because it brings unexpected gifts. Unexpected gifts. So that's what I want you to be thinking about as we talk about this sermon this morning. So far in the sermon series, The Advent Mission, we've considered Christ our hope, and Christ the way. This morning we're going to look at Christ our joy. And for the past two weeks, we've spoken solely about the second coming of Christ. When we examined the reasons for the seasons and the end of the world as we know it. Those were the sermon titles for the last two weeks. This week, we're going to shift gears a little bit. And we're going to start on our way toward the manger scene. And as you could tell from the text that I just read, uh, we will not quite get there, but, uh, but at least we're definitely heading in that direction. And, and again, uh, just like last week, I want to start out uh, with a story from my own youth. So when I was a teenager, I can remember a wonderful present that I received from my mother and father. Dad was a big, big deer hunter uh, enthusiast. And he hunted every year for many years. Uh, we hunted, uh, we were lucky enough to hunt on private land, my grandfather's farm up near Alpena. And, and he had about 120 acres there of woods and swamp that was surrounded by another 120 acres of cornfields and rye. So it was prime, prime hunting land. And I had gone out hunting with my dad for a couple of years, uh, but could not carry a gun because I was not old enough. Uh, and while I was glad to be dad's hunting buddy, you know, sitting out there freezing to death uh, in the cold at 4.30 in the morning. Um, uh, and I really, truly was glad to be that. Um, uh, but I wasn't part of the hunting party at that point, at least. I wasn't one of the hunters. Well, I, I don't remember if it was my birthday or if it was Christmas, but they're so close together, so it was probably a joint gift, I'm sure. Um, that year, I received a 20-gauge shotgun from my parents. And, and um, I was not expecting that gift at all, not necessarily expecting that gift at all, but man, was I very excited about it. You see, um, 
I knew immediately that I was one of the hunting party, that I was now uh, going to be one of the men joining my father, my grandfather, and all my uncles uh, as part of the hunting party. And that was a wonderful, wonderful, unexpected gift for me that year. So I want to open up uh, our sermon with a few questions uh, to ourselves, to each and every one of us. Uh, and, and so here's a few questions. Here's the first one. Have you ever desperately wanted a particular gift for, or for Christmas or maybe for your birthday, um, but ended up not getting it? Has that ever happened to you? Um, the first thing that came to mind when I thought about this question was the movie The Santa Claus. Y'all remember the movie The Santa Claus? Uh, the Santa Claus was with Tim Allen and Judge Reinhold. Um, maybe I'm just watching a little bit too much TV these days, I don't know, or too many Christmas movies, whatever it is. But uh, Reinhold plays the psychiatrist doctor that does not believe in Santa Claus, and he's trying to convince his uh, adoptive son that there's no such thing as Santa Claus. And, and, and you might ask, well, why doesn't he believe in Santa Claus? Well, because when he was a little boy, he desperately wanted an Oscar Mayer wiener whistle for Christmas. But alas, the whistle never came, and he lost his faith in Santa. Has this ever happened to you? Have, you? have you desperately wanted a gift that just didn't show up? And, and there was Judge with his whistle. The second question then is this. Have you ever received a Christmas gift <laughs> that you absolutely did not want? It, it, has that happened to you? Right? There's a question you can ask yourselves. So another movie came to mind. Like I said, maybe I'm just watching too many movies. I don't know. But another movie came to mind, The Christmas Story. Have you seen this movie? What an excellent movie. Do you remember this? Little Ralphie. There he is. Little Ralphie received this beautiful little bunny pajama outfit from one of his aunties. And you can tell he's just thrilled with the ideal of having that gift and wearing it and trying it on for his mom. Has this ever happened to you? Maybe it was the ugly Christmas sweater. Maybe it was the ever-beloved fruitcake. And, and no offense to those of us who love fruitcake, because I do, but I, I hear lots of people say, man, Steve's shaking his head <laughs> in the front row. No, thank you for the fruitcake, right? But, but by the way, you may want to be very careful about who you admit that to, uh, you know, receiving a Christmas gift that you really didn't want. Just be careful, right? And then there's a third question uh, that I think is my favorite of all. Uh, and sometimes, friends, the question is this. Have you ever received a meaningful gift that you were not expecting at all? Have you ever received a meaningful gift that you weren't expecting at all? How about the unexpected gift of the macaroni necklace that Christina was sharing with me earlier in the week? Uh, or the handful of freshly picked dandelions from out of the backyard from one of your children with that beautiful little cherub face looking up at you? See, Mommy, I picked you some beautiful flowers. I mean, those are awesome gifts. Maybe it, uh, maybe it was a diamond ring you weren't expecting that surprised you. Maybe it was a large Christmas bonus from your employer that you were completely surprised by. Or as in my case, the gift of becoming one of the men in the hunting party. Uh, what better gift could a young man receive, at least in my way of thinking anyway? So I want you to think about these three questions as we jump into our text for this morning. And our text this morning is all about an unexpected gift, or really I should say several unexpected gifts for two women in Judea that had implications for the whole world to this very day. Implications for the whole world to this very day. So the first unexpected gift given that day was the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Elizabeth is the one who received him. You can see that in verse 41 of the text. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I get to give you a little background information about this to, to explain to you why this was such a unique and unexpected gift. 
In, in a world where women who were unable to give their husbands a child, in that world they were made to feel shame. And they were looked down upon because they were unable to fulfill their wifely duties of providing a child for their husband. And I, I know we don't necessarily think that way anymore, but that was very prevalent in the days of Elizabeth. And so Elizabeth had gone through her entire life, and remember the text says that she was much older now, and she was beyond childbearing years. You can read about that just a little bit earlier in, in Luke chapter 1. But now she's pregnant, right, with a child, an unexpected child, whose name would just happen to become John the Baptist, right? So she's blessed by this child who, who brings her out of her shame and embarrassment, but also she is blessed at the same time with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And you might remember, friends, and if you don't, I'll, I'll just remind us, that the Holy Spirit before Pentecost, which has not yet happened clearly, was sent upon a person for only a brief season or a task or a small period of time. And most of the time, the Spirit was sent upon prophets, who were mostly men, but not always, mostly men, but not always, to bring a word from God to the people about the past, the present, or the future just to bring a word. And, and I'm going to take a side note deviation here for just a minute. I want you to notice something about that little scene, about verse 41. Elizabeth's child leaped within her, in the womb. Here's the amazing thing that I find extremely compelling. The very first human being to recognize Jesus as the Christ was little John, who was six months along in his mother's womb still. An yet unborn child is the first human being to recognize Jesus as the Christ. And I want us to think about that for a little bit and think about that mightily. Anyway, back to the main story here. So let's consider the frame of mind that Mary might have been in as she comes to visit her cousin Elizabeth in the hill country. Now, she had to come quite a ways. Nazareth and where um, Elizabeth and Zechariah lived were quite a ways away from each other, so she had to travel quite a ways. And, and what the text says is that a few days later, uh, Mary goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And so she's been traveling for a while. So here's a question, gang. Why does Mary come to visit her cousin Elizabeth up in the mountains? And um, when we went on our trip to uh, Israel, we got to go visit the place where, where most experts believe that uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth lived, and it is way up in the, the hills, and it was quite a trek, I can tell you. Um, anyway, why does Mary come there in the first place? Well, a couple of things I think are going through her mind right now. I'm sure that she's coming to confirm what the angel Gabriel had told her at the announcement of her own pregnancy, and that is that her cousin was pregnant by six months now. Now, now Mary knows Elizabeth is well past the years for bearing children, and, and so she's, she's got to come and see. Is, is what Gabriel said true? You know, the one who could not get pregnant, is she now pregnant? And, of course, she finds out she is. And she most likely was coming to the hill country, I think, to get away from the rumor mill and the condemning glances that she anticipated back home when the village discovered she was pregnant and not yet married. Because, remember, Mary is about 13, 14 years old. She's betrothed to someone to be married to him, to Joseph, but she's not yet married. So she shouldn't be pregnant. And after all, in, in the world that Mary lived in, a pregnant woman outside of wedlock could very well be stoned to death for infidelity, especially since she was betrothed to Joseph. So she was most likely, in, in, I think, in many ways, filled with fear and worry and trepidation at what she was, and what was she to do. I mean, this was amazing news from the, the angel Gabriel that she was pregnant with God's son, but you know, reality is, humanity is, 
she was probably frightened about what's going to happen. And, and I think, I venture to guess that she needed to hear a word from a sympathetic family member. And this is Elizabeth's, now a spirit-filled prophetess, task in this very moment. This is the second unexpected, although I suspect maybe hoped for, gift given in this scene. She brings a word from God for Mary. The word is a blessing. Look at verse 42, uh, the second half of it. God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. And then she goes on down in verse 45 a little bit further. You are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. Think about how strange that must have sounded to Mary. God has blessed you above all other women. Now, this is Mary. She's 13, 14 years old. She, she lives in a, non, you know, a nondescript little town in the countryside of Israel. She had, you know, the, the ideal of her uh, family being royalty was long ago gone. And yet, here's Elizabeth telling her that you are the most blessed woman ever. Ever and forever. I mean, here we are 2,000 plus years later and we are still talking about her and the blessing that was given to her by God that day. (coughs) Excuse me. And look closely at verse 45. Is that not one of the best definitions of faith you can find in the Scriptures? You are blessed because you believed that the Lord would do what he said. You believed it. See, Mary had received the news uh, of the angel, Gabriel, about her forthcoming child, but I suspect it really brought her a lot of concern and worry and fear. But it was her cousin Elizabeth that made it good news for her. Good news, not just news, but good news. And the third gift given that day shows up in how Mary responds to the prophetic words spoken over her. And that's found in verses 46 and 47. Mary responded, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And then she goes on, if you read the rest of the verses, she gives a a beautiful, just a beautiful, magnificent discussion of what God has done to bless her and bring her joy into her life. That good news became the source of Mary's joy for the rest of her life. The Advent mission becomes Christ our joy for each and every one of us who believe and profess that Jesus is Lord and Savior. Joy. Mary received an unexpected gift of joy. Elizabeth received an unexpected gift of joy because of her her pregnancy. And the Holy Spirit... And a word from God. And over and over and over, the gifts were given, unexpected as they were, and yet wonderful. So again, we must ask ourselves a bunch of questions about this little scene in the mountain of Judea. How does it apply to our lives in our Advent season in our modern days today? Well, here's the first thing you might want to consider. And this may surprise you. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Advent has traditionally been a season of fasting and penitence. Closer in mood to Lent than Christmas. 200 years ago, Advent would have been that. It would have been a time of fasting, of penitence, of returning to God, of reorienting yourself towards God. Not a great big huge celebration like we see it today with household parties and shopping sprees and and all that other stuff. Does that surprise you? How might this challenge our consumer holiday culture that we live in today, which is seemingly stretching further and further back into the months leading up to December? I started hearing Christmas music on November 1st. There was Christmas decorations the day after Halloween. Actually, there were Christmas decorations in some places the week before Halloween. 
I mean, it's getting ridiculous. How does it challenge you to think about that for Advent? To think about it as a time of penitence and reorientation? Here's a second question. You know, we, we often say in our, our um, communion liturgy, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Well, I want to add one onto the front of that. Christ is born, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. How is the birth of Jesus good news? Or, or at least that, that we're waiting for that birth to happen here in the next couple of weeks. How is that good news for you? How does the birth of Jesus, just like in Elizabeth's case and Mary's case, how does the birth of Jesus change someone's story from doubt and fear and shame into joy? How have you been changed from doubt or fear or, or whatever else, shame, whatever it might be, into joy because of the birth of Jesus? And I want to go back. The third question is this. Uh, it, it, it is asked of by Elizabeth when she first greets Mary. And it's this. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? So here's a question for all of us. Does the return of Jesus, which is what the first three weeks of Advent is all about, the return of Jesus make you anxious at all? When you consider your standing before God, is there a behavior or a pattern or an attitude that you especially exhibit during the holiday season from which God might be calling you to repent, to reorient, to reconsider? And the final question I want to ask us is, what gift is the Lord trying to give you that you haven't opened your heart to receive yet? It may, be not, it may be one of those gifts that you're really not looking forward to, but it might be a gift that you need and God wants you to have. What is God's answer to our moral and spiritual need? Well, it's Ephesians 5.18, which says, don't be drunk with wine. And, and hear me, I, I have no qualms with anybody having a sip of wine, a glass of wine. But it says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled or drunk with the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that God wants to give as a gift. And he wants you to enact it. He gave it to Elizabeth that day so that Elizabeth could give a word of hope and joy to Mary. He wants to give you the enactment of the Holy Spirit in your life so that you can be good news for someone else. Who might that be? And will you say yes to the Lord when he calls you? Friends, what would the world, what would our community, our church, and our individual families look like if we were to bring the good news of Jesus Christ this year I can't tell you how many signs I've seen out in the, on the road here in Portage alone that just says, keep Christ in Christmas. What if we were just to bring Christ for Christmas? Wouldn't that be a really unexpected gift for our consumer-driven world? Rather than the trappings of commercial Christmas holiday and parties and, and, and you know, bubbly and all that other stuff, what if we were just to bring Christ? We have a lot to think about this Advent season. Advent is good news because it brings unexpected gifts. So be on the lookout for an unexpected gift from God this holiday season for you. And if you're not careful, you might discover that the gift he gives you is really for someone else too. Amen and amen. Good morning, church. It's my privilege to pray with you today. 
I'm mindful, as I suspect actually some of you are, that all of the eyes of the entire world are kind of focused on our community this day, Portage. They're all watching this town. The TV satellite trucks have been set up for days in a line with all eyes on our town. And now today, the hopes and fears of an entire nation are looking for the good news of a vaccination. We who are followers of Jesus perhaps have a better understanding of the Advent hope and desire that Brother Don is talking about this day that a message of hope and joy would be found in the news of a coming child. In 1744, one of the founders of our Methodist movement, Charles Wesley, wrote a prayer. And the words of that prayer become one of the Advent hymns. And I would like you to hear the words of the first part of that prayer and see if they don't speak loudly across the centuries to us today and maybe capture our hopes and our fears and the need of the joy of the good news. Pray with me as I use Charles Wesley's words to start. Come, thou long-expected Jesus, born to set our hearts free, born to give our fears release. Oh God, we long for the good news and found in Jesus. We live life in the context of trepidation, of anxiety, of questions, and no shortage of doubts. God, we need the hope that is found only in you. We need what only you can provide. So we give you thanks that you have blessed us again with an old message that is so desperately new and needed, the good news of Jesus. We cry out, O oh God, on behalf of the people that we know and are aware of, that we love and are blessed to care for. We pray for each other and all of the circumstances that we confront. We want to find the full joy that comes in this season and not let the questions and the doubts and the fears rob us of what you are giving us. So hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Thanks for our church. We're so grateful that even though physically set apart, that our hearts are one in you. So even as we pray how you taught us how to pray, God, hear and know us as we turn to you this precious day. And so Jesus said, pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We've got one more song that we'd like to share with you, and we'd like to ask you to sing along with us. It's To God Be the Glory. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life for atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord. Oh 
Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He hath done. Great things He hath taught us, great things He hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son. Thanks for worshiping with us today. I hope that you've been blessed, and I hope that you've heard the voice of God speaking to you and received this blessing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.